Now, 15 years ago, what was I doing? I was making a video with Mr. Excel. Mr. Excel and Excel is fun trick number 30. And the goal was simple. We needed to, from some initial amount, figure out how many of each bill denomination we needed. Now, if you click this link and go watch, it's a funny watch because we were just kids. And yesterday in the comments, someone said, hey, can we revisit this and figure out how to do it with dynamic spill array formulas? Now, the old school formula looks something like this. And I did a little trick here. Notice up in the formula bar, that cell has a zero. Control one. I actually use custom formatting to show a label. And here's the formula. The basic part is simply, hey, for the first 100 bill, we're going to take 273 and divide by 100. Control enter. Well, the decimal part we don't need, but we know we need two, so we'll just use the int. Int takes the integer. In this case, two, close, control, enter. So we have our answer. We need two 100s. But when we copy the formula over to figure out how many 50s we need, we actually need to take 273 and subtract from it 2 times 100. That would give us a remainder of 73. And when the formula gets copied over, we're going to have to successively multiply bills and number of bills and subtract it from whatever the original amount was. So F2. I'm going to click inside of B9 and hit the F4 key because we need that locked when we copy. And from that, we are going to subtract using some product. Now the function takes two arrays. It'll multiply the arrays and then add them. And we need an expanding array. And the reason I put a zero there is because I'm going to take zero times 273. Well, that's zero. But when it gets here, 100 times 2. So I'm going to select B8, shift semicolon to put a colon and add a B8. And then to make it an expanding range, I want to lock B8, so I hit the F4 key. Then right after B8, comma, array 2, B9, shift semicolon, and lock the first B9, F4. So now close, we'll have this expanding multiplication giving us whatever the running total is to subtract from 273. Now we do need to force subtraction before division. Close, open, and that should do it. Control Enter. Copy it to the side. F2, F2 again, and sure enough, the ranges are expanding and we're getting the correct number. Now we can prove it equals some product. Highlight. Those are the bills, F4, comma, and whatever number of bills. Close, Control, Enter. That is looking good, 273. Now, for the dynamic spilled array formula, we're going to use a groovy function called mod. Mod just allows you to take a numerator, comma, the denominator, and it tells you what the remainder is. Now, notice that right now, mod is looking at the initial value. Then it takes the first item in this array as the denominator, tab. But what we need to do here is not look at initial equals, well, we're going to take the remainder using mod of whatever the previous value calculated was, comma. If the denominator is 50, 23 is left. Similarly, again, notice. This formula, as it spills this way, has to look at the previous calculated value. 23 divided by 20, well, the remainder is 3. Well, the way that you get a dynamic spilled array formula to look at the previous value as if it was looking at a relative cell reference is to use the scan function. Equals scan. The initial value, well, we know what that is. 273, comma, here's the array. Those are going to be the denominators in essence, comma. And we have to define a function. We need mod. And the way you define a function whenever you have a function argument in an Excel worksheet function, you use lambda. And the way lambda works is we put parameters or variables, as many as we want, 
And then when we put a comma and use the calculation, we use those variables to create some calculation. For us, we're going to use the mod. And lambda has to communicate with scan. And in fact, scan is a helper function invented specifically to work with lambda. So lambda already knows, since it's in scan, there's an initial and an array. We just have to explicitly put those variables here. And now I'm going to use i to represent initial i, comma. That was the first parameter. Here's the second parameter, array, comma. And lambda and scan will work perfectly. Now, anytime I use i and a, it will represent initial and array. And this is where our calculation goes. For us, mod. For number, it's the initial numerator, comma. And the divisor will be, as it iterates along this array, 100, 50, 20, and so on. So that is a close. We'll put an i there. Close. That's on lambda. That whole lambda thing, that's the function that's going to be iterating using that initial value only once. And then iterating always using the previous value. Close. Control Enter. And sure enough. For that calculation, it only used the initial value. But the magic of scan is that for the second and third calculation, it's always looking at the previous value instead of the initial value. Now, here's the thing. When we do int, we actually need 273 right here, and then 73 needs to be in the second position, 23 in the third position, and so on. So watch this. I'm going to say drop. There's the array comma, comma, I want to drop that last column. I don't need zero. Now, positive one drops from the left, minus one drops from the right. And that's exactly what we want. Now we want to shift it over and put 273 right there. Well, that's easy enough, H stack. Initial value, comma, there's the array. Close, Control, Enter. Now it's as simple as pi. We take all of these values, divide by the denominator, and int it. Divide by, control, enter, 2110011, F2. Well, that's easy enough with int. Close, control, enter. And sure enough, we have spilled and got the number of bills needed for 273. If I change this to 306, like a charm and I can copy this down and check and sure enough old school or new school or 15 years ago or today it's all fun determining the number of bill denominations all right we'll see you next Excel magic trick